Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. So we have made it to the end of 2021. It is that time of year where I give you my top 10 favorite movies of the year. Let that be nasty in the comment section talking about my list is wrong and I pick some terrible movies. You let me like what I like and you like what you like and what you can do is just let me know in the comment section below what does your top 10 look like. Now of course I did not see all the movies. I did see 150 movies. If you follow me on Letterboxd, the list is going to be a little bit out of order as I have been playing around with my top 10 just to kind of give it a feel really of how I want it, how it looks when I really just put it out there in the public instead of just kind of keeping it to myself. Now to make it on my top 10 list is very simple. I'm very, very simple kind of gal, you guys. One, I have to have seen the movie, obviously. If I haven't seen it, it can't be on my list. And number two, you have to be, of course, memorable. Now enough with this intro, let's get on with why you clicked on this video. Coming in in 10th place would be The Green Knight. This is an A24 film. This is a movie that, you know, kind of had audiences split. Some people found it dull, boring, long. And then there's others like myself that really, truly enjoyed it and just absolutely fell in love. This is a mythical, beautiful, strange, symbolic movie with great visuals. Everything seemed like it actually had a purpose and wasn't just like thrown in there. This is more of a medieval quest type of movie and this is more of an artsy movie just in general so if you are looking for something to kind of just like shut your brain off this is not going to be the movie for you because you do need to pay attention to really be enthralled by everything that you're looking at on screen. Number nine is one Netflix movie Malcolm and Marie. Just like The Green Knight it is a movie that had the audience split. Some people loved it, some people hated it. This film was just so beautifully written. The cinematography is absolutely stunning. It is in black and white and it works absolutely wonderful here. So it is a movie with no distractions. We have one set, two actors, and we're focusing on a very passionate, powerful exchange of dialogue. I really love seeing Zendaya in this very adult role. John David Washington also was amazing and like one of the things that I always remember is him eating that damn macaroni. Now moving on to number eight, that's going to be Pig. Yes, I have a Nicolas Cage movie in my top 10 movies. Heck you guys, I have another Nicolas Cage movie, Willy's Wonderland. I believe that's my number 11 or 12 movie on this list. You'll see it on the honorable mentions, but I'll go ahead and mention it now. So just like my previous two movies, this is another one that had people divided. Some people called it slow, boring, long, and others like me saw the beauty within the movie. Now for some reason this is gaining a John Wick comparison and I think that might be the main reason or a big reason why a lot of people are not really liking it because they're going in with these expectations of a revenge action type movie but instead got a deep simple and meaningful story about love loss moving on and forgiveness cage did deliver an impeccable performance here one of the best of his career i really really hope he gets an oscar nomination i mean i doubt it <laughs> but Fingers crossed because he truly deserves it for this role. Now moving on to number seven. Some of you may be like, why is this on your list if it came out last year? Yes, you may have seen this movie on some people's favorite of the year last year because it was featured like in film festivals. And it also had like a limited, I believe, Christmas release last year as well, but officially went wide in 2021. And that is why it's on my list. And that is one, Promising Young Woman. This is a very yummy looking dark comedy thriller type of film. Carrie Mulligan gave an Oscar worthy performance. She did not win the Oscar but she was nominated. The ending I feel did have the audience split. They loved the movie up until the very end. That's kind of where they kind of lost it a little bit with it. Now then there's others like myself, unlike my sisters, that we were just like, what? Obviously. But it worked and we were satisfied with the conclusion. Was it fucked up? Yes, but it worked. Moving right along to number six and that's going to be Coda. This is an Apple TV original film. This is my very first Apple TV movie that I've ever seen and thank goodness that I saw a good one. Now Coda does stand for Child of Death Adults. Guys, get those tissues ready for this heartwarming 
coming of age story. Coda really captured the weight of responsibility of 17 year old Ruby who is the Coda of the family who runs a fishing business. I was also trying to balance the challenges of being a teenager in high school and she really doesn't know do I have to stay with my family can I go off and explore the world uh, she feels guilty if she does take off like what kind of daughter would she be if she took off we do have amazing performances all around with Amelia Jones who plays Ruby Marlene Matin is the mom Troy Kotzer is a dad I'm pretty sure I pronounced his name wrong Daniel Durant is the older brother Leo now these last three actors are part of the deaf community and who can do that advance he does play the music teacher that not alone all right number five we are halfway there and that will be nobody now this is another movie that of course have that John Wick comparison again but but this one makes sense we are following Mr. Nobody an ex-assassin who has left the assassin world to become a family family man and no a dog murder did not happen here that is not what set off Mr. Nobody off what set him off is when this couple decided to invade his home and decided to steal his daughter's kitty cat bracelet and that is what threw him over the edge and I love Christopher Lloyd here he plays his dad and you know what he can still kick some ass going on to number four and that's going to be the father this is another one that came out in 2020 film festivals I know I started a lot of people's like favorite of the year in 2020 but again officially had a wide release in 2021 and that is when I saw it was 2021 and again you guys get that box of tissues ready we are within a world of somebody who's fallen with Alzheimer's with dementia so this could hit home for a lot of people who have family members or who have had family members who have suffered from this disease the thing that makes this movie different from other movies about dementia about Alzheimer's is that we're not seeing the disease from the family member's point of view we are seeing the disease happening from the person who has it and that would be one sir anthony hopkins who did absolutely amazing in this role so absolutely amazing you guys that it was oscar worthy yes he did take home the oscar and just the way that they were able to capture to make us the audience be just as confused as the person who has or just to give us a glimpse rather a glimpse because obviously we, we wouldn't be able to understand but just to kind of give you a glimpse of what they're going to the confusion of your mind just leaving you betraying you it's just it's it's terrible you guys it's a terrible disease this movie is so so beautiful I loved it I did have this movie up higher I'm not gonna lie up until today when I was kind of rearranging I am kind of regretting it but I know once I get to the other ones I'm not gonna regret it but I, ugh, I really I really want this movie a little bit higher but then I also want those other movies a little bit higher as well of course we have to have some honorable mentions your eyes do not deceive you that is one barb and star go to Vista del mar as number 11 i don't care i love that movie it's so freaking ridiculous it is totally my jam do not judge me i know that it's on a lot of people's worst of the year i don't give a shit so moving on to number three this movie up until today has been in my number two spot since i saw it now this is one of two superhero movies on my list yes you guys i have two superhero movies i can't even believe i have two superhero movies and this is gonna be you guys one the suicide squad now personally did not have a problem with the original Suicide Squad. This movie is so fun, it's hilarious, it's stylish, it's gruesome, it doesn't take itself too seriously. I was able to get introduced to some new characters here. My favorite, of course, like many, is uh, King Shark with his nom nom. This movie is just such a blast. It's just so bloody good. I love the gruesomeness. Uh, if you know me, I love like bloody gruesome things. Moving on to my number two, which was originally my number four <laughs> up until again a few hours ago when I was kind of writing my little my little notes for me to 
quickly go through this video, which I think I'm doing pretty well to be honest with you. And when I got to this movie on my list, all I could write was, in capital letters, this movie is awesome, exclamation point. And I go, I cannot leave this as number four, which is that. Like I literally was just gonna be like, that is it, point blank, exclamation point, let's move on to number three. And that is one, Spider-Man No Way Home. This movie just surpassed so many expectations. The nostalgia in here was amazing. And that's all I'm gonna say, you guys, because I've talked about this movie in the review and in my Spider-Man ranking. And I'm gonna talk about it again at the end of the month for my monthly <laughs> wrap-up list. So this is gonna be the end. It's freaking awesome, you guys. All right. Before I do give you my number one movie, I thought I would share with you guys my sister's um, favorite movies of the year. Now, if you're new, my sisters are unofficially a part of my channel. I do feature them a lot. Moving on to my number one, you guys, we made it, number one. And it should be no surprise at all if you truly know me because my favorite movies are animation, and comedy that is right animation comedy i mean i love action i love drama yes but i will always choose an animated movie or a comedy movie over anything most of the time majority of the time honestly this is one netflix movie the mitchells versus the machines i freaking love 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 this movie in the midst on this trip, on this family trip to kind of get together one last time, we have one robot uprising. <laughs> yes, indeed, a robot uprising. We're in an, an apocalyptic world with amazing animation from the studio that brought us Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. So it's like a satire film about how the humankind has relied on technology so much. We have a whole like mall giant ass Furby scene that I was totally here for. I was totally here for that scene. It was as creepy and as terrifying as you would imagine a giant as Furby and its little minion Furbies would come at you would be. Again, the animation is absolutely amazing. It's funny, it's colorful, it's witty, it's great. For the whole family and has some really good music i do really believe this is gonna get an oscar nomination i really 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 hope it wins the oscar but i don't know i think luca may take it or encanto all right guys uh, that is my list these are the top 10 movies of the year for me don't forget to let me know down below what are your top 10 favorite movies of course no list is gonna be the same list you guys we're on another you know let's just enjoy each other's list it has been a great year you guys thank you so much for joining me in 2021 all right guys until 2022 i'll see you guys at concessions bye